out. This here is my male fire skink, Tiastra. And he's pretty chill. He was crawling around pretty good last time, um, just a moment ago. But he's got some of his energy out. So I figured I'd just talk a little bit about some things about fire skinks um, while he's out and being a very good boy. Um, <laughs> but these guys are a tropical burrowing lizard. So they like it very, very humid and very, very warm. His tank is actually about as warm as my boa's tank. Um, and actually, if he wanted, if he presses himself on the heat pad, he can get um, some belly heat up to 110 degrees, um, with the ambient air being in the 90s. Anything cooler than that, and uh, much cooler than that, and they will be sick, you have to, have to keep them at least 89 degrees, or they will get sick. So, temperature is very important. He's not nearly as touchy about his humidity. It definitely has some substrate, definitely has some drier spells, uh, but he does have a humid hide, which is, he loves it. That's where he sleeps. So uh, temperature is probably the number one um, importance when, when keeping these guys. They can, like I said, they can tolerate some drying out in between the, uh, the mistings and stuff. Um, I make sure, like I said, he's got the humid hide for, for when it dries out a bit, and he can fit, he does have a, a really shallow but wide um, dish, water dish that he can actually sit into, and the water, the water only comes up to about his chin, so he's certainly not going to ever end up with like a desert environment, because that would kill him. Um, but the reason why they're called fire skinks, I'm trying to do this without disturbing him, is you can see all the red, these red stripes along the side there. He's going to look at the camera. Hi! He's got some red there on his face. Look at that spotted chin. Oh, that spotted chin that the camera doesn't want to focus on. Um, <laughs> and then they have this gold, um, gold, gold brown kind of stripe down the back here. Black legs, and their actual base color is black. Um, he is actually a very tame fire skink. He's a little zippy. He's, he's actually very tame for a fire skink. You can see here, there's kind of a mark in the scales. Um, that is an old injury that was healed up before I got him. He's got another little mark right there on his head. It's back. Um, fire skinks are almost exclusively wild caught. Um, the ones that are sold by breeders at reptile shows, the ones sold in big name pet stores and everything, they are almost exclusively wild caught. You will be hard pressed to find captive bred or even just captive hatched uh, fire skinks. Um, and I actually had a baby captive, captive hatched fire skink at one point. And I can tell you that baby fire skinks are extremely picky. They're extremely touchy to their conditions and when I got him he was actually already sick. Um, they can climb. As you can see my boy is climbing. They have, they have claws. I don't know if that will come out in the camera. No. They have really really tiny clear claws on each of those toes. So they can climb. I, uh, he does have a couple of things to climb on um, in his cage. He doesn't climb much. He can also jump. As you just seen, he jumped. Whoa, where are you going? Um, like I said, he's really tame, but when you have them, and he's pretty chill, but when you have them out, you do got to keep an eye on them. Because um, they will just zip all over the place if you're not careful. I'm hoping he'll jump for you again. Yep. Hey. Um, but yeah, you can see his claws. He's leaving marks on my arm. You can see all those little red dots. That's from his claws. So they're kind of sharp. Didn't pierce the skin or anything. It's just going to leave some marks and scratches, really late scratches and stuff. Um, so it's mildly uncomfortable, but they don't really hurt. Um, like I said, I do give him things to climb on in his cage. He uses it occasionally, mostly, again, they're burrowers. He lives under his substrate. So he's got a nice, uh, a nice damp, loose 
thick layer of uh, substrate. A lot of people just use coconut fiber. You can mix other things in that coconut fiber if you want. Um, I personally have him on cypress mulch just because it doesn't compact down the way that uh, coconut fiber can and it also doesn't stick in between his scales and then get everywhere every time I take him out. Um, much cleaner. Let's see the tail. Now if you hold still again I can show you some other things but oh no he's getting his second wind. It's like I'm showing off for the camera. Showing off the camera. You can see the pretty big. He is an adult. I think I mentioned that so he won't get much bigger. Maybe a couple of inches of tail <laughs> yet, but, uh, you know, maybe one or two inches overall yet. But for the most part, full grown. He's an adult since I got him. I haven't even had him quite a year yet. It'll be, did I get him? I got him December. So it'll be a year in December. He's such a good boy. Look at that face. They're very expressive little creatures, honestly. Let's do a lot of the, the head cock, cocking and... He'll stick his tongue out and whatnot. It reminds me a lot of a bearded dragon as far as attitude goes. And sometimes he'll even blow air at me. Like he'll blow air out of his nostrils. And it sounds, he'll huff at me essentially. Um, so they can cock a little bit of an attitude. I have seen fire skinks that aren't nearly this tame. They run all over the place. They never call, they never settle down like this. They are just zippy, 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 zippy. They just want to get away from you and burrow under something real quick. I've had a cut. Why did you bite me? Um, again, the bite just feels like a really bad pinch. Uh, their teeth can't break the skin or anything. Um, now just calm it down. Their tail here. Uh, their tail is not prehensile or anything, but um, a fire skink, what a fire skink can do is, like many lizards, if they're ever caught by their tail by a predator or they get it pinched, they can actually drop their tail. Uh, he's not going to let me touch it. Uh, so they can actually drop their tail. And this boy actually has a regrown tail. Um, I don't know how my camera is going to focus. There we go. But you can see here he kind of has some stripes on the side. And then right down here it stops. And it's kind of just black with the model. And then you can see here too on the top. Kind of fades out and then suddenly it's black. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem to match anymore. And that's because his tail's regrown. Um, from the top, you can kind of see, like, right around here, there's just a tiny bit of a bulge. So right here is where the regrown starts. And you can see, he lets me touch it. He's a very good boy. Um, I'm pet him, but yeah, he's got a regrown tail. You can see, I'm not pinching it, I'm just putting my hand under it. Okay, that's good luck here. You can see, again, we're some striping and then it stops and the tip uh, the, the bottom half of the tail doesn't quite match the pattern on the upper half and that's because it's regrown it was regrown when I got him um, so he wasn't missing his tail or anything when I bought him oh here he goes trying to trying to burrow hey careful you can see he's doing a tongue thing and there's proof that you really got to watch these guys when you have them out because they can take off. Um, he's not so bad. He just kind of goes in spurts. Most of the time he'll sit and you can tell him just let me take photos or videos or do whatever the hell I want with him. Um, and the only thing I wanted to show you were their feet if my camera will. There we go. There's toes. Oh, we're not gonna. No, we're gonna jump. Are we gonna jump for the camera again, boy? Oh, no, we're going to climb down. Woo! I have to put an arm in front of him or he'll just be gone. Calm down yet? Nope. Pain in my ass. Just these toes. I want to just show you these toes. They're, they have very long toes. Very, very long toes. And sometimes these toes will move in very weird, like, very weird ways. And you'll be like, oh my god, are they okay? Because they'll bend their toes like this even, sometimes. 
the way they're grabbing onto things because they're very long, poseable toes. and So it might freak you out a couple of times what they can do with their their toes. Look at this. <laughs> Tell me that doesn't look funny and like it's broken. Um, See, so he even lets me play with his feet. Where are you going? Come here. No, 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 no. Now when you're grabbing them... Hold on a second. YouTube, he is trying to get away. Hey, hey! <sighs> Sorry, YouTube. He was like totally going in between the couch and I had the camera upside down. Um, why is my camera... There we go. Sorry about that. Um, but I want to say when they're, I was going to show you, except for I couldn't, uh, when you're picking them up and their claws are like really looped in to something, I put my hand around like this and then I put my index finger up underneath their, the front paws to help gently unhook it from whatever they're on versus just kind of grabbing and pulling up. It really helps to kind of just slide your fingers up under their paws so you can gently you can move your hand like this or whatever to uh, unloop whatever their their claws are around you gotta keep an eye on him he's definitely a sneaky little guy sometimes <laughs> um, but he's not bad for a fire skink he's he's very good and I wish he'd show it but I don't think he's going to uh, when they dig they actually kind of wheelbarrow like um, they'll walk forward with their front paws and they'll tuck their hind legs completely flat against their tail so they'll straighten out their hind legs and tuck them against their body and just kind of pull themselves forward walk forward with their with their front paws and just kind of slide on their belly it's really funny um, when they dig. I have a video of him actually, um, a picture of him actually doing that somewhere. But it's hilarious. Sometimes they'll hold their, their walking, their paws kind of weird. I think he's getting grumpy. He's been out a while. Come here, boy. color here. Why my camera doesn't want Very good. I can pet his head, his chin. You see me playing with his toes and his feet and everything. So, um, these guys are insectivores. You can get them, um, like blue tongue skinks and pink tongue skinks. Um, you can get them to eat the occasional piece of other kinds of meat, um, the occasional piece of fruit or greens or eggs, um, cooked eggs. Um, but for the most part, they eat mainly insects and only insects, any kind of insect. Um, he'll eat anything that moves. He'll eat crickets, hornworms, superworms. I mean, I'm sure he would love roaches. Anything. If it's, if it's an insect, he'll freaking eat it. I'm, I'm sure he would probably climb up on top of his wood and leap off of it to grab a moth that was flying around in his cage if I stuck a moth in his cage. So he's a very good eater. He's a freaking chow hound. Um, but like I said, unlike blue tongue skinks and pink skinks, they don't really eat a lot of vegetables or, or fruit or anything else like that. Um, if I mix some worms in some uh, finely chopped up cook, um, cooked egg, uh, he'll eat a few pieces of egg along with his worms, but that's it. Um, I will be trying, like, banana puree with him this summer. Maybe some strawberries, maybe some blueberries. 
because I know those three fruits are highly favored um, by blue tongue skinks over anything else. And there he goes again. Mm -mm -mm. Where do you think you're going? So we're gonna give it we're gonna give it a try. And there's all the scratches, people. More scratches than I had before. Ah, ah, ah. See? Gotta watch him. It's like a fucking three-year-old. And they have dots on their tummy and their chin, and he's not gonna show you. Any dots on the He's like, I'm gonna hop around, Mom. So I think I'm gonna I think that's about it. As far as fire skinks go, he's not gonna get much bigger than this. Don't need a big cage. About a 20 long for one, uh, and a 40 gallon breeder for a pair is what's suggested. I actually have him by himself in a 20 high. Um, just so that I could give him a little bit more substrate and still have something for him to climb on and have his exoterra hide and everything without him being able to reach the top. Um, cause I actually have a 20 gallon high. I had a 20 gallon high on hand before I bought him that the screen broke on. So I just kind of have a makeshift screen. Let's see if I can get a look at his face. Okay, we really just want to cooperate. So, that is about it, folks. About fire schemes.